Democrats who called for the firing of FBI Director James Comey are shocked and appalled by the firing of FBI Director James Comey. The Democrats say that Comey's firing will undermine the investigations for which they said he should have been fired. In order to examine and examine which Democrat claims are cynical political fabrications and which are hysterical conspiracy theories, and which are cynical political hysterical theories about fabricated conspiracies, let's examine which investigations might be affected. The FBI, as we know, is investigating whether the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians to expose the Democrats' emails. The Senate, meanwhile, is investigating whether the Obama administration investigated the Trump campaign for the con collusion that the FBI is investigating. The Judiciary Committee is investigating why the Attorney General failed to investigate Hillary Clinton's attempt to avoid the FBI investigation into the Attorney General's failure to investigate her emails to the Democrats, which the Russians hacked, in an attempt to interfere with our election, which the Senate is investigating, in an attempt to find out if the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians' hack of the Democrats' emails, which the FBI is investigating, to see whether the Obama administration was investigating the Trump campaign. The House Intelligence Committee is investigating whether the House Intelligence Committee overstepped its bounds in investigating the Obama administration's attempts to use the intelligence community to investigate the Trump campaign's collusion with the Russian hack into the Democrats' emails, which the FBI is investigating in order to find out whether the House Intelligence Committee overstepped its bounds in investigating the Obama administration. The head of the House Committee, meanwhile, has stepped down pending an investigation. At the same time, many in the press are investigating why the press never investigated the Obama administration's investigation of the Trump campaign, but continues to investigate the Trump administration's investigation into whether the Obama administration investigated the Trump campaign, which is now under investigation in the Senate, causing several investigators to call for an independent investigation into the House investigation of the Senate investigation of the Trump administration, which is meanwhile investigating the Obama administration, which is on a yacht in the Bahamas at the time, dancing to the musical style of Drake's hotline bling. Mr. Drake is not currently under investigation. Now, to be clear, an independent investigation into the Senate investigation of the House investigation of the Obama investigation into the Trump campaign could expand the investigation into an investigation of Russia's investigation of the emails that were under investigation by the FBI, which was in turn under investigation by the NSA, who have been investigating everybody in a surveillance program that's still under investigation. If that were to happen, there would no doubt be calls for a full investigation into all the other investigations. So it's easy to see that the firing of James Comey will have to be investigated to ensure it doesn't in any way curtail the important business of government, which is investigating. Thank God the government's not actually governing, then we'd all be in real trouble. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky dunky. Life is tickety boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo. Ship shaped, ipsy topsy. The world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day. Hurrah, hooray! It makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray! Oh, hooray, hurrah! All right, it's mailbag day. Yeah. All your problems solved right here. Uh, and if you subscribe to thedailywire.com, you can be in the next mailbag and leave your questions and then climb out of the mailbag and go home. Now, those of you who are watching that uh, opening, I know you were all thinking the same thing. You were thinking, how does that guy look so fantastic? I mean, good God, the muscles, the body on that guy. And the, re the answer is Beach Body On Command. Beach Body On Command. J Jonathan Hay, our producer, J.A., is using this himself, right? And, yeah, and he, you can't see him, but he actually no longer wears a shirt to work. He just comes in uh, look, in his bathing suit and just kind of flexes a lot. And it's, a, it's a little embarrassing, but, but it's that easy to exercise with this. All you got to do is you, you're basically downloading an app, and you can put it on your Apple TV, right? Oh, yeah, you put, you put it right on the TV, wake up, press the button, there it is. You get access to over $6,000 of the most effective fitness and nutrition programs that, are, that have ever been created from world-class super training proven to deliver amazing results. This platform is the largest community of its kind dedicated to helping people truly achieve their goals. And this is not just like, you know, some weird exercise program. These are familiar brands like P90X. I have done that, and I have to tell you that that is serious.
serious, serious business, Insanity, 21 Day Fix Extreme, T25, Three Week Yoga Retreat, all this different stuff, plus nutritional advice and all kinds of ways to keep track of your progress as you're going forward. And so what you want to do is you just you, you download this thing and then you it's a, it's a uh, much smaller price that you get this incredible array of programs. And then you can keep track of everything you're doing and you decide what you need. You know, do you have to lose weight or do you want to get in shape for a wedding or do you just want to improve your fitness? Especially great, by the way, if you're traveling, which I do a lot, and you can just have it with you all the time. Uh, and, 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 wonderfully, we are now offering it to our listeners for a th- we give you a free 30-day membership. So you can try it out, which is really worthwhile, right? If you try it out, you get to see how well it works. Here's what you do. You text Andrew to 303030. Andrew to 303030, and you get a full 30 days of access to this entire platform. It really is amazing. Beach body on demand. Just an amazing array of exercise programs. I've used it. Jay Hayes is, is using it, and it's just uh, it's just really great to stay in shape. All right, so should we all be hysterical and run around with our hair on fire? Uh, you know, I'd left my hair at home, but uh, you know, <laughs> otherwise I would set it on fire to react to the firing of James Comey. I mean, I just I have to say it is ridiculous that the Democrats who have been just excoriating this guy are suddenly shocked and appalled. You know, I'm shocked, shocked, Mr. Trump, to find that you have fired James Comey. So he gets a letter, a classic Trump letter. He gets this letter firing him, delivered by Trump's like personal bodyguard while he's on some at some job fair. He, he apparently thought it was a joke when he first got it. But I love this thing where he says, Trump says, while I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under investigation, <laughs> and I nevertheless concur with the judgment of the Department of Justice that you are not able to effectively lead the Bureau. So this is like basically him saying this has nothing to do with FBI investigation into any kind of collusion between Trump's campaign and the Russians. And the, the, Demo- the Democrats who, like I said, they hated Comey because they blamed him for Hillary's loss, right? Hillary blamed him for her loss. The, the Democrats blamed him. Now, suddenly, they're selling the idea that this is a constitutional crisis on the order of Nixon's Saturday Night Massacre. So let, listen to, of course, the Nets, the networks, they just serve as an echo chamber for the Democrats. That's all they are. They're the Democrat echo chamber. And, and here, the, here are the Nets selling the Democrats' message calls for a special prosecutor to take over the Russia investigation. Democrats compare this to Watergate. Some congressional Democrats compared President Trump to Richard Nixon, who ordered the firing of the Watergate scandal's independent prosecutor. And put this into context for us, because some are comparing this to Watergate. Well, uh, it's understandable that people are comparing it to Watergate, because, of course, what happened there is that President Nixon fired the special prosecutor because he was getting too close. And, uh, and here we have the president firing the head of the FBI. Columnist in the New York Post said, if all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and if all you are is a Democrat, everything looks like Watergate. This is a reference to 1973, the special prosecutor investigating Watergate tried to subpoena, subpoenaed Richard Nixon's tapes, the tapes of his conversations with private people, uh, you know, private conversations in the Oval Office. Nixon didn't want to give them over, so he demanded that the AG fire Cox. The AG refused, so he fired the AG. Then the deputy AG refused, so he fired. And then finally, it was Robert Bork, I think. It was. It was Robert Bork who, who fired him, who fired Archibald Cox. So three people went down, and it was just a, it was a blatant attempt to cover up this you know, the Watergate investigation, to stop the Watergate investigation. So here is the, are the Democrats. I mean, these are the Democrats who just a little while ago were telling us that, you know, here's Pelosi. Pelosi's version of this was, this was back in November when Comey said he was reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton. This is how Pelosi reacted to it at the time. I think he made a mistake on this, and he clearly has a double standard. When it comes to uh, Donald Trump and or the or keep him out of it, just when it came to the hacking by the Russians, that that the highest confidence of our intelligence community says the Russians did this. I know it privately because of being hacked by the Russians, and he says was well, too close to the election uh, to talk about that, and yet it's not too close to the election to talk about. Uh, 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 
the emails that he says may not be significant. So I think he made a mistake. And these jobs, if you're not in it for a while, you can't take the heat. And I think he just couldn't take the heat from the Republicans. It's really unfortunate because I do believe he is a good person. Maybe he's not in the right job. <laughs> he's not in the right job. So you know what was coming. You know, uh, John Nolte uh, tweeted yesterday that he's lucky that Hillary didn't get elected. Comey is lucky Hillary didn't get elected because not only would he be fired, he'd be dead. <laughs> but, you know, it was obvious. It was obvious that Comey's head was on the block if the Democrats got elected. And the only difference was that Trump didn't do it right away. But we're, we're going to talk about this more, obviously, when we try and get at what, what went on. But before I do, I have to play Keith Olbermann's reaction back in October. Keith Olbermann, this is his reaction back in October to uh, Comey reopening the investigation into Hillary's emails. The director of the FBI must resign. First, he must retract his statement, then resign. There are only two alternatives here. James B. Comey either knowingly tried to tamper with a presidential election 11 days out on a hint of a possibility of a rumor of an inference of a chance of Clinton emails that reportedly aren't from Clinton and aren't to Clinton, which his bureau had not bothered to tell him about nor gotten a warrant for until last night. Or James B. Comey had no idea that his statement would impact a presidential election in such a way that there would not be a chance to disprove the negative he threw against the wall like the shit by all accounts it is. In the former case, Comey, once that rarest of individuals, the nonpartisan legal hero from the Bush administration, is a criminal who has desperately and personally and at the last minute tried to deliver this country and its 240 years of democracy into the hands of a self-obsessed, compulsively lying fascist with no respect nor interest in anyone or anything besides himself and no understanding of the real world and the billions of people he could kill in a fit of pique <laughs> over something somebody would say about him on TV. <laughs> That was his reaction. That was his reaction back in October. Yesterday, he tweets, Trump de Trump declares war on the U.S. fires Comey. <laughs> they got, they, if Trump declares war on the U.S. by firing Comey. Uh, you know, and, and here here is, uh, well, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to play them all. They're just like talking. They're basically saying, oh, it's a constitutional crisis. It's a constitutional crisis. Here's the problem, okay? When you fire the independent investigator, the special uh, investigator into Watergate, you're, put, you're trying to put a kibosh on an investigation. The FBI is not going to stop investigating the Russian collusion if there is an investigation. They're not going to—you know, you find, it's not Comey who was investigating. It wasn't Comey like in a trench coat and a snap from hat going out and investigating. There are dozens of agents on this case who, by the way, you know, the FBI is a really good organization. It really is. And— by the way, if they try to put the kibosh, the FBI is going to leak like a colander, you know? It's just going to be suddenly, you know, suddenly everything they've got is going to be in the newspaper. Trump knows that. Trump's not a dummy, you know? It's, it's, it's utterly ridiculous to think, it's just implausible to think that Trump is, you know, trying to stop this investigation this way. It just doesn't make sense that that's what he's doing. What is also implausible, of course, is what Trump said. Trump basically said, I'm doing this because you mishandled the Hillary Clinton uh, investigation. That's also implausible. That, I, you know, nobody, nobody can believe that. You know, I just have to stop for just a minute, though, and, and talk on a sidebar here about how often the Democrats depend on your ignorance to say what they say. And the reason they can do that and the reason the Republicans don't do it as much, it's not because the Republicans are saints and the Democrats are devils. It's because the Democrats know the press will back them up. The Democrats know if they depend on your ignorance. You know, you talk to Democrats. Whenever I go to New York, I talk to a lot of Democrats. They believe this stuff. They believe this stuff. Oh, you know, they, they will. I, I can tell you within the next week, several Democrats will say to me, oh, it's just like Watergate. It's just it's exactly like what it's Watergate. It's Watergate. You know, you'll just keep hearing the same way with global warming. You know, the people just absolutely buy into this stuff because they buy into it because the press echoes everything that the Democrats say. But, you know, it's interesting that Chuck Schumer basically gave the game away because Chuck Schumer was one of the people who said he had lost confidence in, he said, I've lost confidence in Comey. Now, when you say that, that is essentially saying that the guy should lose his job. When you say, I have lost confidence in your ability to run the, the department, you are saying, this guy is out. So Chuck Schumer said that, you know, when, when the uh, email investigation was reopened, 
and he was asked about it as he was saying what a cover-up, it's all a cover-up, blah, 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 blah. And he got off, and he actually described the situation that we're in now. I never, I never called on uh, the president to fire Director Comey. I had a lot of questions about how he handled himself. But the overwhelming question is this. If the administration had those same questions, the events occurred months ago, and they should have fired Comey on the day they came into office. All of them occurred before he came into office. So that does not seem to me to be a very logical or persuasive explanation. So he's absolutely right. The question is not why he fired Comey. Why? It's why he fired him now. That is the question, and we're going to try and answer it or at least look at some theories. But first, we have to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, which means if you don't come over to thedailywire.com and hear the rest of the show, you will miss the mailbag, which in turn means that all your problems will continue.